Hello everyone, this is Matteo and today I'm going to talk about stability and repeatability. In a previous video I showed you how to create small variations over the same subject. Today we'll create a character and put him in various scenarios, trying to keep the same face of course, but also the same clothing and gadgets. The first thing that I need to do is the face. I'm using Dream Shaper 8 as main checkpoint. It is an SD15 model that I'm using simply because it is fast, but all that I'm going to show you today also works with SDXL and actually probably better. So here I have a very simple prompt. Fantasy illustration, male birded, 45 years old, half elf, ranger, etc. This gives me this result. Now, since I want this workflow to be modular, I'm going to split the prompt, so if I want to change certain aspect of my image, I can do that more easily. Let me show you. I'm copying the positive prompt, and in the first one I'm describing the main character. So fantasy illustration, I'm removing close up, and I'm going to keep the style tokens. In the second prompt I'm only using words that are going to help me with the generation of this first image because we will have a lot more. So this is basically a close-up portrait facing camera. I am merging them with conditioning concat and then to the case sampler. The generation will change of course, so what we need to do in this first step is to generate a face that is straight and looking at the camera, so that will be our reference for the IP adapter face model later. Now this character is a bit vanilla, to improve things a little I can try to add the name of a celebrity. Let's try with Jason Momoa and I need to lower the strength quite a bit, 0.75 should be fine. Now it is better and it is also going to help with the stability during the whole process. The image is a little burnt, but I don't want to lower the CFG, so I want to try with CFG rescale. The multiplier can be even a little lower, 0.65. We connect the model and then to the case sampler. This is good already, but I want to see if I can get a better stance. I want him to be in a very neutral position and expression. And in this picture, I cannot see one ear. So let's see if I can get anything better. This is very good, but I want him to be really straight facing at the camera. So to do that, we use a control net. I've already prepared the pose that I like. Let me load the image. Now we need the control net node. I lower the strength a little. It's always good to give some freedom to the model. Connect the image. We need to load the control net model. I'm using an open pose, then I connect the conditioning and back to the case sampler. Let's see what happens. I could zoom in a little more, but the position is perfect. Let's try another few seeds. Okay, this is very clean and I think it should be fine. Remember that we only care about the face at this stage. I don't care about the armor or whatever. So now that we have our reference image, I'm going to upscale it with image upscale with model, we load a model, connect the image, this is upscaled four times which is a little bit too much so I'm going to scale it down to two times, 0.5, I'm going to use Lanskos and I want to try to increase the sharpness with a cast sharpening node. Now I'm ready for the second pass, we convert this to the latent space, we copy with shift Control v I get the node with all the pipe connections ready. Connect the latent, change the seed, 20 steps should be enough. Now I want the image just to be sharp, I don't care if the character is very different from the original. Let's see what we've got. We need to lower the denoise of course, 0.5 which is pretty high, let's see. Okay, this is pretty good. Now I need to cut out the face, and for that I can use a crop image node. If you have the Conf UI Essentials extension, you get the image crop plus, which is a little easier to use, but you can also use the default node. 
I'm going to show you the difference. The plus one lets you select the starting point for the crop. I can select top center. I need a bigger window. And then I can set an offset. Now it is centered. Also the node outputs X and Y positions and it can be helpful if you want to make changes and then pass the changes back into the original image. But we don't care about that now. So this is the face of our character and everything else will be just ignored. Next we need to give a body to this face. Actually before doing that let me see if I can make a new picture with this face. So I'm grabbing the first case sampler and of course I need an IP adapter node. For the model I'm using IP adapter plus face, then I need the clip vision, the reference image is our face, then we need the model pipeline, the decode. Now I'm creating a new positive text prompt and I'm removing from the prompt any physiognomic description of our character. So now the model knows how the face of our character is done only by looking at our reference image. We have nothing in the text. I'm lowering the weight a little to give some freedom to the model. And I don't want you to have false expectations. The result won't be 100% our reference image. The IP adapter is not a face swap. So let's see how it goes. And as you can see, the model is now able to generate multiple images, all with the same face. Now, let's see what happens if I change the prompt a little. Instead of a simple leather armor, I may want a full plate armor. I'm giving this more weight. Let me also add close up. And now it's the same character, but with a full plate. Now, since we used a face model, anything that doesn't regard the face is very easy for the model to do. If I want to change anything that regards the face, like the expression, we need to play a little with time stepping. So let me try with laughing. This is probably not going to work. What I can do is to stop the influence of the IP adapter at like 60%. And now he's laughing. Or angry. Oh wow, he's very mad. Let's try with uh, an open mouth. So you'll have to play a little with the weight and the time stepping options, but you can get really interesting results. And if the text prompt is not reacting well, you can try with weight type linear that gives a little more importance to your prompt. So now the body. So I need a new case sampler, another positive prompt. I'm going to need a conditioning concat. I'm merging our generic description of the character with the new text prompt and to the case sampler. Here I'm just using standing. Now to make things simpler I'm adding a control net. I've prepared an open pose stance. This one very simple. Okay it works but I need a bigger latent. Let's do seven 68 and try again. You probably noticed that I didn't use the reference face but at the moment I'm only worried about the outfit. So I can keep generating until I find the one that I like. This is a pretty good one. I might also need a negative prompt so that I can exclude details that I don't want like the sword. When you find the right picture, you may want to do small variations over that concept. And to do that, we can use the case sampler advanced. We move everything to the new sampler, change all the values. Uh, I don't need this anymore. Now I'm converting the end at step to an input. Double click, set it to like three and duplicate this node to create the variations. We connect them together. We need to enable return with leftover noise to the first. Disable add noise to the second. We need to set ended step back to a widget and set it to whatever big number. And convert start at step to an input. Connect it to the previous primitive. And so now the two case samplers are synced. 
I'm changing the sampler to DPM++ to MSDE. This is because SDE is less deterministic, more random, so I get different results each time. We should be set, let's see. So now the first three steps are done by the first K sampler and the others by the second. If I change the seed, I get a new result. Now let's build our character with all the features that we created so far. Before going to the next step, maybe I want to do a second pass over this image to get some crispiness back. So I can create a new K sampler. I'm setting the denoise to like 0.25. Let's do 0.35. This is just to remove a few errors from the original generation. Not strictly needed actually. So this would be enough and I could fit this picture to an IP adapter, but we would lose a lot of details because the clip vision encoder works with very small images. So what I'm going to do is to split my reference into two parts, uh, one for the leg and one for the torso, and I can use again a crop image node. So now I have two square images that are ideal for the clip vision encoder. And of course, over here I have the face. Now I need a new K sampler, an empty latent, and let's try to compose our new character with three IP adapters. The first is for the face, the second is for the torso, and the last one for the legs. We already have the clip vision, then for the face we use the IP adapter model that we used earlier and we need another model for the body. I'm using the plus model. Now the model pipeline goes in the first one and then I'm daisy chaining the IP adapters. I'm increasing the noise to all of them. I want the weight of the face to be pretty high. Let's start with 0.85 while the body will be a little lower, 0.7. I'm also going to need a new positive prompt that I'm merging with the original text prompt with a conditioning concat like before. I'm leaving standing for now. Standing. Let me fix the composition because I wrote stranding instead of standing. Now, it is actually working, but I don't have enough room to show the whole character. As you can see, I always get the same outfit. It's not 100% our reference, but good enough. Let me grab the control net. Now, to help the IP adapter, I'm going to tell each of the three nodes what part of the picture is going to influence. So I'm copying this image just as reference, adding a load image past my reference, copy this two more times, so the face should only be applied on top, about here. And I'm sending the mask to the first IP adapter. The body and the legs. Let's try again. And now we can generate multiple images that are generally very close at least the main characteristics are always there, uh, the colors and of course the face is always the same and the overall clothing is very very close. Of course this is a complicated character to do because it has a lot of gadgets and details. It works very well with modern clothing and of course we can play with the weight of the 3 IP adapter and with the text prompt and of course with different poses. Let's try a pose that is completely different from the original. I have this pose for a person playing the lute. Of course without a line art or canny or whatever control net it won't be able to actually place a lute in his hands so I'm not even going to try but this is just to show you that we can of course use any kind of pose we want. And I'm also going to change the settings, like in a forest. I'm increasing the weight to 1.2. Since we are going to divert substantially from the original pose, I need to give the model more freedom. To do that I need to lower the weight a little, 
as little as possible. And I'm also starting the generation at 10%, point 0.1. This is because the initial steps are the most important. So we give freedom to the model to build our forest, but then we start to apply the IP adapter right away. Maybe we can also end a little earlier, like at 0.9, and this hopefully will be enough. As you can see, we still have the arm that comes from the original reference, so we probably need to lower the weight a little more. And we can also use linear weight type that gives more importance to our text prompt. Still not enough. Let's try to lower the weight a little more. I really want to get rid of the additional arm. And this is pretty good. Now we can try to put him into a tavern. And at this point I have the image that I wanted and of course I can upscale it to get some more details. We can set a pretty high denoise because we are using the IP adapter to drive our composition. So we can use like 0.5, even more probably. And this is pretty good and uh, the face is still close to our reference. Now, since we made this workflow modular, by just changing this first prompt, I should be able to get a new character with very little effort. The only one that I probably also need to change is this one for the war cry, but everything else should work. Let's try with a woman, barbarian and Rebecca Ferguson. For the ladies we need more negatives. Let's see how it goes. Of course women always get plus three magical armor. I would need more time for the outfit but the face is very good and very consistent. Now let me try with something simpler. This whole process is very effective with simple modern clothing. Let me try the same woman in a modern setting and I'm sure the result will be a lot better. playing a little with the negatives we could get rid of the shorts probably and as always this is just to get you started because the improvements that we could do to these workflows are many also starting with a style or character Laura would increase drastically the stability of the image and yeah I hope I gave you some food for thoughts and material to work in the weekend a quick announcement before I leave I was a bit scared about opening a Discord server, I really don't have much time for support, but I partnered with a latent place, it's a German YouTube channel, but they kindly agreed to convert their current Discord into an international server, so if you have questions about Comfy UI or just wanna post your images done following my videos, go to latent.vision slash discord or click on the link in the description. So I'll see you there, it's all for today and ciao!